in Brazil. A weekly show by Geisa Fernandes. Episode 19. Learning to be my own muse. You know, the time after a release can be very hard, a kind of bittersweet time, um, anticlimax if you must. But the fact is, you always expect a little bit more from the result of all that work you've been through in order to release something. Doesn't matter if it's a single or a complete album, an EP, it was my case. Fact is, you try to call everybody's attention, but then after a while, you do realize, and you kind of deeply knew it all the time, that people do not have 100% of their attention dedicated to you, not even that few moments it would take for them to listen to your work. Can you blame them? Of course not. From the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed, well, assuming that you have a safe bed to go to every night, and that makes you already very lucky, my dear listener, well, the complete time in between we are suffering this kind of bombardment of information. And I'm not even coming to the discussion if the content is good or worth reading, What I'm saying is that it's just far too much information. You name the subject, there will be tons of new information every morning waiting for you in the form of new letters you subscribe or maybe the new app you gotta download or let's not talk about small talk among human beings. Some people say it still happens. I kind of doubt it, but anyway. Fact is, I understand them. I understand that people do not have time for my new release. When I listened to a confession, I didn't have time to listen to the complete EP on a roll since it's been released. Ta-da! How about that? And why? Is it good? It's amazing! It's a delight! But I've been too busy to stop and enjoying any kind of music, including mine. And why that, you might ask? Because I've released the new work, now I have to do the follow-up, I have to inform. The influencers, the music journalists, my fans on the mailing list, and then I have also to try to find interesting places where I could maybe get a gig, and if I find her, hooray, but then I have to, you know, contact the right person, try to write the right email pitch so that the person gets interested in booking me, and, well, the merry-go-long, you know it. It's, it's pretty hard. Okay, okay, we got the idea, it's pretty hard, it's pretty sad, but what about the muse thing there on the title? the episode, uh, anyway. Well, pardon me, unpatient listener, <laughs> just joking. I did want to give you the context so that you could understand the kind of melancholy mood I was in, as I've realized, while checking for the 10th time the press release kit, that all my tracks had been composed or chosen thinking about a certain someone. It was a kind of breakthrough, a very painful one, actually. For I realized that my first release, that means my first solo album, was also a kind of compilation of songs written to others. I mean, no problem at all with that. We all do stuff to others. Living is about others. No one is an island. I am aware of it. I really am. But I think the fact that among all my muses, my inspiration elements, basically the guy I was in love in the moment, <clears throat> someone was missing. 
and someone quite important as a matter of fact. I was not there. Composition is a weird thing. And if you are an indie artist, usually you are not under the pressure of producing, producing, producing contact, at least not musical contact all the time. So, at least in theory, you still kind of control your production. I know, I know, don't judge me. I know it's, it's not about controlling your production in the bad sense. It's about having a little bit more freedom to, to do what you want. And I imagine that I have this kind of freedom because I'm not dealing with huge numbers, because I'm not part of a label, I haven't signed this millionaire contract yet. <laughs> the point is, I don't have to keep writing to a certain niche of audience. If I can experiment, if I can try a lot, why am I not trying to change the poetical perspective now and then? Why are my lyrics depending so much on this other person, this muse, that will come and give me the inspiration for making a song? Wanna know my theory? Well, my theory is it's all a self-esteem issue. While writing these songs, I was really kind of searching for validation, and I think deep inside I thought that having a muse, I mean, someone inspiring the song, would be some sort of guarantee that the tune would be touchy, motivating, would please at least one person in this world. The muse. Want to know the truth? Story of my life. I show lyrics or a complete song to a guy expecting at least a reaction. Some sort of. Any sort. At all. You know what I got so far? Nothing. Nothing at all. Once or twice I had the opportunity of facing and asking directly the ungrateful muse. But then all I would get would be a bunch of lousy words and excuses that would more or less sound like, well, it was just too intense for me to handle, for crying out loud, grow up. My point is, if you are writing a song, there is a certain moment of creation when you really have to forget Everybody, you are not writing for pleasing anyone but yourself. I said, in a certain particular moment of creation, I'm not talking about leading your whole career, having this as your motto, please, no. But I mean, there is a certain place that's quite sacred and belongs to oneself. Do not handle it. I told you. A post-release time can be pretty freaky, so I better just stop here leaving you with this very personal thought. Maybe you engage with some part of it, and I guess you will love the final treat. It's a tune that I specially chose for this episode, and it's called Dommage. It's in French, and it means what a pity. It was written, well, in a transition phase, let's call it this way, where if I'm not the muse, at least I'm making fun of the situation, of this date, kind of very promising one, but that didn't turn out to be what it could have been, and it could have been a great romance. What a pity, dommage. And why is it in French? Well, because the guy I was in love with was French. Da -da. <laughs> thank you very much for staying with me so far. Really, thank you very much indeed. Leave your comments as usual. Tell me what you think about it. If you have the same problems as described in this episode. Till next week. And for now, un beijo! Desta liberne en oubliant le pain Sorti du lit lorsqu'il fait froid dehors Comme s'il n'y avait pas de choix Alors c'est dommage Comme l'image d'un oiseau noir qui crie Jamais dans la vie Dommage pour Perdu, c'est
Portugal to the Indy in Brazil. A weekly show by Geisa Fernandes. <laughs>